Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll show you how to upload a file to a Mongo database and then view that same file that you uploaded to the database. So to do this, I'll be using Flask Pi Mongo. So make sure you have that installed. I already have it installed, but it's basically pip install Flask Pi Mongo because that's what I'll be using to interface with my database. And I'll create a very simple example to illustrate how to handle these files. So the first thing we need to do is actually do like the import stuff. So from Flask, import Flask. And in addition to Flask, I'll be using the request object in this video and also URL for, for the eventual files. And then I need to import from Flask Pi Mongo. I'm importing the Pi Mongo class and then I can instantiate Flask. And I can add the configuration for my Mongo database. So Mongo URI. And since I have the database hosted on MLAP, I can just take this URI here and put it in my code. And then I need to add my username and password, of course, and get rid of the carrots. So password one is my password. Once I have that, I can go ahead and instantiate PyMongo using the PyMongo class and passing in the app object. So now that I have that done, I'll create my routes. So I'm going to create three. The first is going to be a form that will allow a user to specify their username and some kind of image or any file, but for our purposes, let's just go with images. And this is like you're creating a user. Um, since it's a simple example, of course, I won't have all the other stuff, but uh, creating a user is the first part. So. I'll create a route. This will be on the index. And I'm simply going to return a form here instead of creating a template. So let me write out the form. So it's going to be method, post, uh, action. Let's call it create. And encoding type, uh, multi-part slash form data. And you need that to be able to upload files. So now my form is going to have three inputs. The first is going to be a username input. The second is going to be the actual file input. Um, let's say profile image. And the third is going to be a submit button. So it's going to be a pretty ugly form, but it will work. So let me get this running. and we should be able to see the form. Okay, so it's pretty ugly, but it will work. So I can't really do anything yet because I don't have the route set up. It's create isn't found. So let's go ahead and create that. And this is where I'm actually going to upload the image to my Mongo database. So the route is going to be create, and because I'm posting data to it, I need to add methods post, and I'll call this create. And what I want to do is I want to say something like, um, if profile image in request.files, so this is where all the files are stored uh, when you send a request through a form. So, you know, send a request that has a file in it, it's going to be in request.files instead of request.form. So this is just some really simple validation. You can always add more, but for our purposes, I'll keep it very simple. And then what I'll do is I'll get the actual file object. So I'll just call this profile image and it's going to be request.files and access it as a dictionary. So it's going to be profile image. So this is a file object now and I'll be able to do things with it. So the first thing I want to do is I actually want to save this file to my Mongo database. So to do that, it's very simple. I take my Mongo database object, Mongo, which I created up here, and I call save file. And I need two arguments. The first is going to be the file name, and the second is going to be the actual file data, so the binary data. So in this particular case, I'll just use whatever file name that they uh, chose for their file. Um, in practice, you may want to use like a random file name so there won't be collisions. So for example, maybe multiple people have like mypicture.jpg. Um, if that were the case, then 
everyone who had that name would have the same image. So you wouldn't want that. So you'd have to generate um, the file name is on your own. But for purposes of this tutorial, I'll just go with the file name because the important part here is actually saving the file. So profile image dot file name and then the actual profile image. So like I said, the first argument is the file name and the second argument is the binary data, which is just this. So we don't access anything inside of the file object. You get the actual data, but when you do uh, the dot and then something, you get whatever that is. So in this particular case, dot file name, and you can get things like the mime type and the content type, et cetera. So now that I've saved the file, that's it. Um, once this code runs, it will save the file to my database. And when I do run it, we'll see what happens in the database. So now I want to create a user at the same time. So mongo.db.users, I'm going to have a collection called users. I haven't created it yet, so in the first run, the collection will get created for me. And I'm going to insert a new document into that collection. And I just want to have two things. I want to have the username, which will be requests.form.get, and then username, which is just getting this value from here. And then the second part of it will be the uh, image name. So profile image name. And I'll just use the profile image dot file name again. And this is how we're going to find our image once we want to retrieve it. So once that's done, I can just return. So I'll just say done since I really don't need to do anything after this point. So now I can run my app. And I'll create a user named Anthony, and I'll browse for an image and select this cat image as my profile picture, and I'll hit submit. And hopefully it works. Okay, so it says done here. So now let's take a look at my database. So right now, uh, it says there are no collections, but if I refresh, we see there are three collections now. So Let's start with users because that's the most obvious. Uh, we have users here and I see my username, Anthony, and I see profile image name cat.jpg. So this is um, pretty typical, pretty standard. And basically what it means is I'm associating the image called cat.jpg with the user Anthony. So now I'll go back to my collections. And I have two other ones. One is called fs.files and the other is fs.chunks. So if you go to fs.files, this is where your Mongo database stores files that you upload. So it has some information. It has like the content type, which is image slash JPEG. It has the file name, an MD5 hash, uh, and length, upload date, and it has an ID. So this doesn't have the actual file data file data, but it has the uh, information about the file, the metadata. And then if I go to FS chunks, this has the actual binary data. So it has a reference to the ID of the file in that other collection and then data binary data. So this is where the file is actually stored. And if you look at the sizes here, you see that this particular collection is the largest of the three because it has the actual data of the image. So now let's go ahead and actually retrieve that image so we can see it. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create um, an endpoint that allows me to retrieve an image from MongoDB. So I'll call this just file and then it will take in a file name. So pretty simple. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to return and then Mongo. And all I have to do is type send file and then give it the name of the file that's in my file system on my database. So just file name. So if I were to pass in cat.jpg here, I would get that cat image back. So now let's take a look. So file slash cat.jpg, and I get the image that I uploaded here. And of course, if I try something else, uh, it's going to error out because I don't actually have a file there. All right, so now the last thing I want to do is kind of display a profile page for a particular user using this file. So I'll create another route and I'll call this profile and it's going to take in a username. And what I want to do is I first want to find the user document for whoever that username is. 
So mongo.db.users. And then instead of insert, like I did before up here, I'm going to find one or 404. So if the user doesn't exist, I'll go to 404. And I'm searching for this particular username. So it's going to find the user with the username that I passed in here. And now I want to return something. So I want to return an F string that has both the username. So let's just use a H1 header. So username. And then I want to return their actual image. So I'll put an image in here and then the source. And inside of the quotes for the source, I'm going to call URL for and then file because that's what I name my function up here for the file route. And the file name is going to be equal to this user that I have here. And I named it profile image name. So what happens here is it will determine the URL for this route here to return that cat image for that particular user. And it will add it inside of the source for the image. And then of course, above it, I'll have the user name. So let's see if all that works. So I'll go to profile slash Anthony because Anthony is the username, hit enter. And now I see Anthony at the top for my user. And then I see the picture of the cat. And if I look at the source, um, we see the image sources, the endpoint for viewing the files, which is just slash file. So as you can see, it's not that difficult to handle files in the Mongo database, especially when you're using Flask Pi Mongo. So I hope this video helps anyone who was wondering how to do it. So if you have any questions about this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, if you haven't checked out my website already, I do have a bunch of uh, video courses on uh, different things in Python. So Django, Flask, um, and Python requests. So if you want to check those out, just go to my website, prettyprinted.com. And I also have a link in the description below. Uh, so that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.